An 84-year-old female presenting with a T2N0 M0 degenerated rectal polyp at 2 cm from the dental line underwent transanal endolaparoscopic resection. The reusable transanal depot is inserted into the anus and the obturator is removed. The reusable silicone cap is applied and a regular 30 degree 10 mm scope is introduced. A monocurved reusable grasping forceps is inserted at the 9 o'clock port orifice. A graduated straight grasping forceps is inserted at the 3 o'clock port orifice. The degenerated polyp is observed at less than 2 cm from the dentist line. A monocurved reusable coagulating hook is inserted at the 3 o'clock port orifice. Safe margins all around the lesion are considered and different scores are applied circumferentially using the coagulating hook. The resection is started at the 6 o'clock position using the monocurved grasping forceps and the monocurved coagulating hook. After incising the mucosal and submucosal layers, the muscular layers are sectioned as well, exposing the retrorectal space. The dissection is firstly performed going into the left lateral side. The correct plane of dissection can be visualized here. The dissection continues on the left lateral side, incising the remnant rectal wall. The dissection then reaches the upper part and it is continued using the coagulating hook. The surgeon worked under satisfactory ergonomics during the entire procedure, without conflict between his hands nor the camera assistant's hand. The dissection is then started on the right lateral side with a full thickness method. The dissection of the perirectal fatty tissue, rectal muscular layer, rectal submucosal and mucosal layers are well shown here. Finally, the specimen is completely free and it is removed through the deep port and sent for the pathologic evaluation. A monocurved reusable needle holder is chosen and an absorbable barb suture is inserted. The needle holder is inserted at the 3 o'clock port orifice. The rectal wall is closed starting at the central point and going firstly on the left lateral side. Since the section tissue always retracts, the first bites are placed on the dentate line. Full thickness bites are placed and the suture is kept well under tension.
decision continues to work under excellent ergonomics similar to conventional laparoscopy. The suture reaches the middle segment of the left lateral side and subsequent full thickness bites are taken. A final intracorporeal knot is created. Monocurve reusable scissors are inserted at the 3 o'clock port orifice and the first suture is cut. A new reabsorbable barb suture is started at the apex of the right lateral dissection and the rectal wall closure is again started in full thickness method. Subsequent bites are placed. The suture reaches the central point where the previous suture was started. An intracorporeal nut is finally created. The final view of the cavity shows the entire suture line with the absence of the flaps opening. The post-operative course was uneventful and the patient was discharged on the second post-operative day. The patient underwent adjuvant chemotherapy.